Hey everybody, it's Eric Papenfus. It's Friday, so it must be a bye day. Again, we're taping after hours so that we can bring you to Eric's favorite spaces in The Scholar. And I have to say, perhaps my all-time most favorite space in The Scholar is the American history floor. <laughs> I'm an American historian at heart. I love the books here. I particularly love all of the books that have been mm -hmm. written about Harrisburg and the vicinity. Uh, including, I understand, Amanda, books about <laughs> your own relatives. Yes. Tell the Biden viewers <laughs> who you're related to. It's kind of, it's a little scandalous, but uh, Simon Cameron right there, Lincoln's whoa. Secretary of War, is my ancestor through some out-of-wedlock relations. It's out-of-wedlock, it's questionable, and he really <laughs> was an amiable scoundrel. Yeah. Um, but uh, that is, I mean, family resent. I'm not sure, <laughs> but, um, you know, he, he got all sorts of in trouble by uh, all the shoddy, the yeah. word shoddy comes from Cam uh, Cameron as well, because of the the uh, procurement process during the American Civil War. We won't go there, but if you want to read more about uh, Amanda's ancestor, <laughs> then come and read about Amiable Scoundrel. I like, uh, well, we've got a whole section of books on haunted local mm -hmm. history, but we also have um, Abandoned Pennsylvania. This book reads like our yeah. by days, right? I'm, yeah. you know, I'm constantly going to abandoned places to film, and uh, that's a cool one as well. Also, this is the only floor of the scholar, Amanda, that has a small selection of books that are not for sale. And I did it, uh, I did it as part of an exhibit to talk about the history of publishing in Harrisburg. And uh, we have everything from the first book I could find that was published in Harrisburg, properly called Death of Vision, you know, <laughs> um, all the way down through some famous books like The Long Lost Friend, which was published in Harrisburg, to the color printing of Gustav Peters and other people that lived down, and they, they, their stores were off, uh, off Market Square, where Market Square is today, where the Hilton is today. Uh, through the McFarland Press, we've got a book signed here by uh, uh, Horace McFarland, another one that's written to uh, Mira Lloyd Dock. Um, color printing, uh, Amanda, was really developed in Harrisburg, and it was used, all the books, McFarland was a big rose grower, and all these early books on bulbs, they were all illustrated in Harrisburg. We had some original art from some of the people that worked up. Uh, and, you know, the uh, the building is still in existence today. It's where the wall collapsed in Harrisburg is the oh. old McFarland Press building. Hmm. Then if you go down, see ads for things like Aran's Bookstore. Do you know where that was? It's where at the corner there. Of, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah that, that building there. Um, and then the Evangelical Press, which is uh, now a school. Uh, and I think then you're even elephant in the room. Uh, the, the Mein Kampf by Hitler? <laughs> well, uh, that is a great story because the Mein Kampf was, uh, was published by Stackpole as part of an American effort to discredit Hitler uh, by telling the American people this is what he wrote. But it has this amusing distinction of this is before World War II, Hitler sued for copyright infringement and actually won in the American courts. And Stackpole was forced to destroy all the copies that are printed <laughs> of the Mein Kampf. So this is one of a very few unauthorized war effort uh, uh, Mein Kampfs that still uh, survives today. And that's just a good story of local uh, Harrisburg uh, publishing. Um, but, but my favorite area on the floor and where we're going to look at our books today is actually the president's section. And I like the president's because, of course, we've got Washington and Adams, and of course, we've got Lincoln. But yeah. then we have all the other presidents <laughs> in between. And they're usually uh, slightly clustered together because, let me just tell you, in the book trade, it's hard to get multiple books on William Henry Harrison. <laughs> he wasn't president long enough to there have multiple too many. books. Yeah. Um, but, you know, more books have been written about Abraham Lincoln than any other president. Uh, yeah. And if you go to uh, Ford's Theater today, they have a, a book tree that goes up multiple stories. We could do this in The Scholar, where every book written by Lincoln is just sort of stacked into this giant <laughs> statue. Um, but, boy, if you want a book on Lincoln, we've got it. And we even have a book about Lincoln in here oh boy. in our box, Amanda. I'm going to open this up. <laughs> You're going to want to see our presidential books uh, this week. Now, these came in. And I wanted to start with this because I'd just never seen this before, and it, it's worth it. This book is just in honor of all the presidents because it is a history of Mount Rushmore, and I don't think you get much more patriotic or presidential mm. than Mount Rushmore. <laughs> but you know what's neat about this book? It actually has a piece of Mount Rushmore in what? the book. Yeah. I think that's a little bit of uh, Washington's nose or something. Uh, the author just chipped it off and put it in the special edition. And then the book is bound in the, the skin of the last remaining American buffalo. And, oh. Uh, uh, no. no. But, uh, <laughs> but, you know, really uh, another book that would not be produced today. 
a buffalo bound uh, book with a chipped off piece of um, of Mount Rushmore. Okay, so <laughs> let's get to the real book. The real book I told you was Lincoln, and this book is great. So do not do not doubt. This is a book called Memoirs of Life in the White House: Personal Recollections uh, by Colonel Crook. And you know who Colonel Crook was? I do not. He was Lincoln's bodyguard. Oh. And uh, amazingly, uh, he was there the day of the assassination when Lincoln says he's going to go to the play. <laughs> and uh, let me just read you what he writes. This is actually his account. Uh, Bold of him. To uh, write this I know, story. I know. Okay, wait, sorry, I'm on the wrong page. It's on this page. But nonetheless, it's really sort of cool. Here we go. No, Crook, you said kindly but firmly, as you have had a long and hard day's work already and must go home and sleep and rest, I cannot afford to have you get all tired out and exhausted. It was then that he neglected for the first and only time to say goodnight to me. Instead, he turned with his kind, grave face and said, Goodbye, Crook, and went into his room. Convenient. I thought for a moment, but he said goodbye, not goodnight. And he went to Ford's Theater, and Crook didn't go with him. And, well, we know what happened. Huh. Now, what's also interesting is that Crook is there for Garfield's assassination, as well as McKinley's assassination. What? And these are also described in the book. He gets... He gets the uh, official word of Garfield here. Um, he's the first to hear about McKinley and the Pan American exhibit. So uh, what an interesting uh, guy. Yeah. And, and he's also, he brings word of Andrew Johnson's impeachment to Andrew Johnson. <laughs> um, but uh, it, it's, a, it, so all these recollections are there. And uh, this is actually autographed. Oh, so yeah. it's autographed by Lincoln's bodyguard. Might be cursed. Which, uh, it could be cursed, but it's also, um, this is how you get the story mm -hmm. of uh, Lincoln having these sort of psychic premonitions mm. of his death. It comes from Crook's account. You can say you believe it or you don't <laughs> believe it. And speaking of Crook's, oh, Amanda, <laughs> that's a perfect segue into our other presidential book, which just came in. Uh, I apologize for all you uh, Nixon lovers out there, and there are some. Uh, but wow. this is this should be our funny book, and maybe <laughs> maybe we'll just make it our funny book. But and I have another book, but but this is this is Lincoln's book. Summon, I mean, sorry, Nixon's book, Summons to Greatness. Uh, Amanda, are you familiar with this book? I have no clue. Okay, uh, well, you need to know first of all. Um, first of all, it's signed by Richard Nixon, amazing. which is which is amazing. But it is a collage of inspirational thought and practical <laughs> ideas from the messages and that addresses of fake. Richard Nixon. It is totally fake. <laughs> and what I love about the book is they have just taken random words <laughs> and stuck them together with pictures of Link, uh, pictures of Nixon. Wow. Um, so let a new day dawn. New day for America. He said that once. Harnessing oh, our energies. He said that once. It's like they've created modernistic poetry. Sound bites. With loving photos yeah. of Nixon and Pat. Oh, and uh, it just, it goes on. Let's, let's show you another sample. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Stand up and think. A time for reassessment. New ideas. Directions, energy. The open door. <laughs> this, this is the cheapest produced book I've ever seen. Uh, Lincoln probably signed all of them, but there aren't many in existence today because I don't think it was a bestseller. No. But if you would like a book dedicated to the inspirational words and wisdom of Richard Nixon, signed by Richard Nixon, you can get Summons to Greatness right here in this case. Huh. And we'll place it right here in this case. So come <laughs> to the bookstore and it will be available to you. Okay, we're going to end with a funny book. All right. And uh, this book is what I was referring to when we talked about Abraham. It's the only biography of a president that I could find that is actually a psychic biography of mm. a president. And it is a serious book called The Psychic Life of Abraham Lincoln. And this book, <clears throat> I'll just give you a little, uh, <clears throat> little tidbit here. Mm -hmm. In dreams, he foresaw his sudden death. He consulted oracles and was told by a seer that he would one day become president of the United States. And uh, it basically argues that historians have dismissed Abraham Lincoln's psychic life because they haven't looked at the evidence, they haven't read the books like Crook's memoirs, and determined that Abraham Lincoln himself was mm. a psychic. The only psychic American president. Mm. If you have another nomination for a psychic American <laughs> yeah. president, I hope you will uh, you'll uh, leave those nominations in the comments. But The Psychic Life of Abraham Lincoln deserved its own commentary by Susan Martinez, PhD. So don't think that this isn't uh, a, a serious book. Um, uh, it will not be in the presidential section, but it will be. In it the sounds funny, so rigorous. It is. It's rigorous and it's good. He apparently really likes seances. I mean, it gets into well, all the mm -hmm. all the details of Abraham Lincoln's psychic life, huh. and there's no other presidential book like it. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed our traveling here on the American History Floor. It is one of my favorite spaces in The Scholar. Next week, we're going to wrap up this series uh, next Friday at noon with one more of my favorite spaces. I hope you'll watch then for more adventures in the world of books.